All right, we are back in the booth tonight, and we're just gonna play around with a sonic sod um, from Lure Build. And we're gonna use some solvent-based paints tonight. And we're gonna just do a little version of a gizzard shad that I do. So what we've already done, I went ahead and put the base coat on. I wasn't gonna bore you with that, but I did a solvent base coat on this one. I did the House of Colors um, white base coat. It's already ready to spray with RU311 in it. So it's already reduced for you, very airbrush friendly paint. And we've painted the whole thing white. And it's very bright white. It's a it's a nice color. It's a, it's, these are actually my favorite solvent based paints that I use are House of Color. Um, you can actually get these paints that we're gonna use in the video tonight from TCB P Global. Um, they carry all kinds. You can actually, I've actually got a, a custom color here that they did for me. So um, we'll go over that as the video goes on. So what we're gonna do first is we're just gonna put a little bit of black in the gun and I'm gonna do a little bit of this Gerald Mendez stencil on the top just to kind of just set the tone for the shad that I'm gonna paint. And we'll switch my gun out. Yeah, we were having a little discussion with some of my lure build um, partners on airbrushes and it, it brought out a, a pretty good discussion on, you know, the airbrushes we use and some of them use master airbrushes. Some of us use Iwata, some of us use harder Stenbeck. Um, uh, some of us use the um, Sotars, the Badgers. But it's just, it's funny that, you know, everybody's style is very different and uh, we use different kinds of airbrushes. So I just kind of just took the black, like I said, took the Gerald's Mendes stencil and just, just put a little texture design on this top. We're just gonna flip it over and do the same thing here. I'm spraying this with my Creos um, 771. And I'll go ahead and hit these eyes. And I'll go ahead and I'm just going to freehand the dot. I'm not going to use a stencil on that. Just put me one right there on the line. I came down a little too far on this side. But that's all right. And we'll go ahead and cover up. Well, no, I'm not. I'm just going to leave the top there. Leave it like it is. Okay. Then I'm going to take... Um, a little modeling stencil. I'm going to put a little bit of modeling on the front of this. Really just keeping it on the gill. And we'll let that dry for just a second. And I'm gonna clean this out of the gun. And all I'm using is just the hot water. And that's just with the water base now. I don't I don't put water on the uh, solvent base. I just clean it out with acetone. And uh, and the gun that I shoot with it is a zone is a Iwata HPCH. It's got solvent-based packing in it, so I don't have to worry about that. Eating my seals up. Cause you gotta be careful with that. You got if you're gonna spray these paints, you gotta make sure that you're not um, just messing up the seals in your gun. So we're gonna put that gun back and we're gonna switch. Well, I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna go out I, on, on the when I do the gizzard shad, I put a little bit of gold on the um, gill plate too. With modeling, I do like a double and it kind of gives it a neat, neat look. And all I'm using for that is, is the golden um, 
iridescent fawn. It's very airbrush friendly. Just throw it on my 4E's Vortex mixer, let it shake it up real quick. I need to do a video on that because like I said, if you, if you paint a good bit, that Vortex mixer is nice to have. It is very, very nice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna go over the black just a little bit, just to have some gold in it too. And you can't hardly see it, but it's there. And it'll it'll show when you do your your finished coat, whether you epoxy it, UV resin, KBF, whatever your choice is, whatever you're doing. Do a little bit more here. And that just gives it a cool look on that black. So I'm gonna clean the gun out. We'll let that dry. this up and we'll go ahead and switch back to um, my Iwata uh, HBCH because we're going to start spraying some of this solvent base. And the first one I'm going to spray is this. Uh, this is a custom color that I had made. Um, show me the money green. It came from, like I said, TCP Global. And you can do the same there. They have some that are pre-done. You can have them mixed. Uh, it's just like a regular paint shop. They'll, they'll mix whatever colors you want. It takes a little bit of time, but it's very airbrush friendly. It's already pre-mixed. Um, this one's pre-mixed with KR70, so it's ready to spray. Comes to you ready to go. And it's a, it's a cool green. I like it. I catch a lot of fish on green, so I, I paint, I tend to paint a lot with green. I'm gonna cut this pressure down a little bit. But this is a nice green color. Um, and we'll just start it on the top. And I'll let it slowly roll down the sides. I don't want it to take over, but I'll... Very good color though, very nice. You don't need a lot and it dries so fast. That's what I love about the solvent based paints. They dry incredibly fast. So we'll take a little acetone note. I'm not wearing my mask right now, but you really need to. You don't wanna, you don't wanna spray a bunch of this and not have it on. But like I said, I'm not spraying a lot. I'm gonna do a short video tonight um, and get it in. Uh, and it's pretty much dry now, but you can, uh, like I said, I think you can see in the camera, the green is very vibrant. These, these solvent-based paints are, I really, personally, I like them better than water-based. I just, I think they're easier to spray. The colors are just fantastic. Um, doesn't take a lot of paint, very little. Oh, so what we're going to do next, I'm going to switch guns. I'm going to go back to my 771 and I'm going to put a little bit of silver in and I'm going to do my blotches on the side of the, of the, the gizzard shed. So we're going to, we're going to use some iridescent silver from golden fine. I'm gonna put it on the Vortex mixer, let it run for a second. You can probably hear it in the background. And it's it shakes it up in a matter of seconds, which that's that's a lifesaver. I mean, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you are like me. I got more paint than I could ever use. I've probably got a couple hundred bottles, have just about every color that I could think of. And uh, it, um, it doesn't get used all the time. So you gotta kind of be careful and um, and make sure it's mixed so your, your pigments and all are taken care of so they look halfway decent when you spray them. So we're just gonna lay this stencil up on the side and just put some texture on it. 
And you can see what it does. It just blots it up. That's what I like. That's what the shed looked like where I live. And it gives it a really unique look. And we'll do the same on this side, just in the reverse. Just blot it up a little bit. And we're gonna let, I'm probably gonna go ahead and heat set that. Just clean the gun out real quick. This is a very easy pattern to do. You can do it on swim baits, any of these crank baits. It doesn't take long. Once you get a feel for that stencil, and you can turn out some good looking baits. So let me grab my dryer here real quick. And we're gonna hit it and just dry it off. More for the water-based paints, really, because the solvent base are, are already pretty dry. And it gives it a, it really does, it gives it a three-dimensional look when you're looking at it um, after you put the blotches on that. So what we're going to use next is what I, th this really just kind of finishes the job. These are called ice pearl green particles. And all it is is just a clear coat with a bunch of green crystals in it. If, if I was going to compare it to water base, it would be kind of like hot rod sparkle, but I just think it's a little bit of higher end stuff. Uh, it's a, it is a very nice um, finishing touch to your baits. I've got a turquoise one that I've, I'm going to do a video on a turquoise bait, but I wanted this um, green gizzard shad type one for my, I'm going to go on a little fishing excursion here soon and I wanted one for me. So what I'm going to do is I've shaken it up real well and I'm going to put some in and I'm just going to spray it all over the whole body. I'm going to leave the bottom just white and I'm going to turn my pressure up a little bit. And all I'm going to do is cover the whole thing. And it just gives it a nice shine. And we'll give it a nice sparkle. Ooh, I put some smoke in the booth. Woo. Yeah, you don't want to do a lot of spraying of this with um without your mask on. Okay. So I, I'm sure you can see it in the camera view. When I turn it, it is very sparkly. When you put whatever your choice of top coat is on this, it is going to pop. So what I'm going to do next, I've got some eyes I got from Carrie at Backwater. They're a large pupil eye. I just like them. I think they look good on shed. Oh, um, so we're going we're gonna to try to get these on without getting our hands all in this other stuff while it's drying. And they're just a very large pupil eye. I think it's going to give it a really cool touch. As I knock that over, we'll spin it around. Make sure it's in there. And then I'll take it out and let you look at it. It gives it a really unique look. A cool little quick gizzard shad pattern for you to do on a great bait. If you've never used these size sonics, they catch fish. And they catch a lot of them. They're, they're, and it's this time of year, too. The water's cold. Um, it's going to be a great time to fish them. Um, so let's go back over what we did. So what I did first was, um, you know, I taped my bill. And then I put a couple of coats of House of Colors white base coat. Then I took the... Gerald Mendel stencil, and I used some golden um, carbon black. 
and I did my little texture area and I did my kill dot. Then I came back with the modeling stencil from Anarchy, which is so popular. It's a nice one. Very, I like it because it's very small and I put it around the gill plate in black on both sides. And then I actually took gold, iridescent gold fine from Golden, and I went over top of that. Gave it a kind of a, a really unique look. Then I took a custom color. It's called Show Me the Money Green Pearl from the custom shop at TCP Global. And we did the top, and it's actually a, a very nice green pearl. Then I took a iridescent silver and we used the Gerald Mendes stencil again and just put some uh, blotches on the sides of the bait on both sides. And that kind of finished it up. Then we just put the icing on the cake and we just put the ice pearl green over top of it. Um, and that's really gonna make the bait pop um, it's going to give it a, a really realistic look. Um, I can't wait to get my top coat on this. I'm going to let it dry. But I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, you can get these Sonic Sides from LureBuild.com. Um, Jimmy's got plenty of them. It's a great bait. So if you have not painted any of these, go check it out. He's got some fantastic paints there also he's come up with that I've got to go and get my hands on to do a few videos on. So go check Jimmy out at LureBuild.com. You can get the House of Colors paints at TCP Global. You can get the golden paints. I buy them from uh, DickBlickArt.com. Uh, I usually get pretty good pricing there. Um, I use two different guns on this on this uh, lure, I used my PS771, which is a Creos .18. Then I used my solvent-based gun, which is a HBCH with a .3 in it. So I hope everybody enjoyed the video. Hit the like button, subscribe. Hit the bell notification um, so you know when I have upcoming videos. Like I always say, I'll catch you next time. Thanks.